Rolling Stone's continuous history of rock and roll is brought to you by Bubble Yum Bubblegum. It's a super yum. And by Levi's Jeans. Quality never goes out of style. Rolling Stone Magazine's Continuous History of Rock and Roll, Volume 2, Number 82. This week we'll examine the psychedelic era and some of the bands who helped define it. I'm Gary Bridges. When we return, it's the music of Pink Floyd. Canned Heat. What we did really was to incorporate country blues. Iron Butterfly. The Strawberry Alarm Clock. That band was just one fiasco after another. And more as we hear from the electric groups. unabridged dictionary defines psychedelic like this. Of or causing extreme changes in the conscious mind as hallucinations, delusion, or intensified sensory perception. In the mid and late 60s, the word psychedelic meant a lot of things. As it got to be hip to experiment with LSD, the mind-altering or psychedelic drug, love beads, flowers, bold colorful prints, and long hair were psychedelic. Hippies were psychedelic. And some of the rock and roll of the late 60s was known as psychedelic or acid rock. The original idea behind acid rock was to give you the feeling of being on LSD through the music, often with the help of a light show. The experimentation and raw energy of the psychedelic era changed rock forever. Well, the psychedelic era is over, but we've found a number of the electric stars of the 60s. And in this hour, we'll meet some of the electric groups whose music helped shape the acid rock sound. This is Rolling Stone Magazine's Continuous History of Rock and Roll, and we're unraveling the story of the electric groups of the psychedelic era. Rock and roll in the States gained a lot from the new blood of the British invasion. The British bands of the 60s loved American music, and their version of rock and roll turned out to be a shot in the arm for American musicians. Well, the music changed, but so did the atmosphere from making and listening to music. Stereo records and radio really took hold, and the new technology gave us a whole new range of sounds for bands to play with. Guys like Hendrix and Clapton and Jimmy Page pushed playing ability out into the spotlight. And a new heavy style of rock evolved. Before the term heavy metal became popular, the heavy, loud, blues-based rockers were all lumped together as psychedelic bands. And one of the loudest, heaviest, and most popular, at least for a couple of years, was Iron Butterfly. The band was the brainchild of Doug Ingle. Ingle got an early start in music, and by the time the British invasion hit, he was already playing in local bands in his hometown of San Diego. In 1966, he put together the first Iron Butterfly, which recorded one album. But by the time the album started getting attention, three members had split, leaving Ingle and drummer Ron Bushy by themselves. They found Eric Braun to play guitar and Lee Dorman for bass and the new Iron Butterfly went out on a tour of the States. In 1968, they put out the album In Agata de Vida with its mammoth, sidelong title track. In Agata de Vida was a classic, and drummer Ron Bushy told us how the song came about. When Doug wrote the song, it was only like two minutes long. He wrote it when it was just he and I, you know, when we were looking for new musicians to get us back going. Um, He stayed home while I went down and, and... cook pizza at this place to, to keep us alive. And he drank a gallon of Red Mountain wine, got drunk, and wrote this song. I asked him to play it. He played it. And he was so drunk, it, it, it came out in the Garden of Vida, but it was in the Garden of Eden, you see. And I thought that was kind of catchy, and um, so I wrote it down in a Garden de Vida. And, and it did have a, a nice uh, ring to it, so we went with that. That's how the name came about. And then we took it to a rehearsal and just expanded on it after just two minutes uh, of just chord change and then just the simple words. 
and we went, you know, took it a lot further. Iron Butterfly, from an album that spent over two years on the record charts. In a Gata de Vida, on the continuous history of rock and roll. Rolling Stone Magazine's Continuous History of Rock and Roll, Volume 2, Number 82. We'll end the week on the electric groups today with Ron Bushy, drummer of Iron Butterfly. Iron Butterfly was one of the heaviest of Los Angeles' psychedelic bands. In 1968, Iron Butterfly's second album, In Agata de Vida, made them national stars and won them a place on the charts for over two years. Drummer Ron Bushy told us how the song came about. When Doug wrote the song, it was only like two minutes long, and he drank a gallon of Red Mountain wine, got drunk, and wrote this song. I asked him to play it. It was so drunk, it, it, it came out in the Garden of Eden, but it was in the Garden of Eden. And I thought that was kind of catchy, and uh, so I wrote it down. In a Garden of Eden, baby, don't you know that the whole has been true? This weekend, we'll expand this look at electric groups to a full hour on the continuous history of rock and roll. I'm Gary Bridges for Rolling Stone magazine.